I am Instagram Instagramming live to show you that um, I'm not hinged, freaking out. Yes, a little bit because I'm a mother. So I am. And you would too. And anybody who doesn't understand that is not a mum. Um, and that's that. So, yes, last night I got an email from my visa processing place saying, hey, it could take up to nine months, and I've already waited two months. Yeah, if you had to wait a whole year to get into the U.S. to see your kid. Uh, and you have to make a choice between uh, education and your time uh, and what the government is deciding to do for no reason. Um, yeah, you would ask questions. You would ask questions. And really, I got on Instagram live to talk about. <clears throat> the only counter thing that anyone can say to me right now is go, oh, am I, aren't you anti-black to turn these people against me? And that is the blanket they've always hidden behind because this is a very sensitive issue. I am. Yeah, I haven't replaced my phone yet from the last Instagram live. Um, yeah, I just don't want to stay on here too long, but I want to say for anyone who's got the question of like, hey, you know, this is racism and it's like, it's not. I am a mum who's trying to get into the US to go and see my child. My child happens to be made up of the family who are currently at war in a different country, okay? And on the other side, that's the political side to why it might not be processed so quickly in the visa office of the government that they fund and campaign for um, but it's about the fact that also Ben has got the black card and he will always get it out against me and it's not that like Jay-Z did not choose not to help me at the time because I'm Indian and he doesn't help Indians and he chose Ben because he's black. It's not true. Jay-Z chose to stay out of it and keep quiet and take himself out of the picture. And, you know, and I left Rock Nation because of course Jay-Z has to choose money. Jay-Z will always choose money. And that was the point. Like, I don't expect Jay-Z to help me, but I didn't know about those boundaries and those lines and about money until I experienced that. So until it hit my personal life in that way <clears throat> that involved my child, I did not know how much love for money or, of course, respect even, because Jay-Z has to respect the family that gave him Def Jam. If somebody gave you Def Jam and made you an executive of Def Jam, are you going to choose the mum and the child, or are you going to choose the boss? So this is not about race. Please leave race out of it, and this is important for me to clear this up for all the black people out there, that Jay-Z did not pick me because I am not black, and Ben is black. That's not what happened. Jay-Z picked the family that put him on, and that is not... Ben, that was Ben's dad, who's a different fucking race. And that is that. I just wanted to clear that up for you guys. 
So that's one thing on the race issue. The second thing is <clears throat> about the vaccine thing. I, I was specifically talking about permission. I think when it comes to a child's body, until that child is 18, both parents should have a right to decide what happens to that child. Unless you are completely beyond uh, incapable as a human being and you're in, you know, you're a severe, I don't know, incapable to raise a child and which is not the case because I work and I take care of people and I do all of these other responsible things. Looking after my child has not been a problem. So yes, both parents should have a say in what happens to a child's body, especially during a government that campaigns so hard about your body, your choice and rights and all of this stuff. What happens to a child? What happened to the parents' rights on that child? Um, so no, I, I support equal rights for both parents to have a say if both parents are deemed capable and responsible people. And that's what I was talking about. It was about permission, which is a, it, it's also by court that we both have the right, you know. So that is that. And I do feel bad that um, my child has to experience this um, during his uh, birthday week, but I just got the email and I can be patient and I have been. Um, because I'm, I, I know I have to be patient. Because he's been in school in America for two years, so you know it's not about patient. And and also, I moved to America in this time, um, so that I can be closer to my child, while education was happening in America, but while the education was happening in England, you know, it, it, it's not difficult for um, his dad to move to London, but that never happened. So in that sense, I am doing a lot more. Um, So I just wanted to clear those things up, that this is a unique situation because um, whoever has the uh, authority to decide my visa, what are they influenced by uh, in making this decision? Uh, are they it, it, it influenced by... You know, obviously the person who's making the decision on my visa was not there four years ago. So it's a new person. This person's probably a lot younger than me. Um, probably super, like, prejudiced. Probably racist. Uh, and probably is educated by all of these, like, fake um, movements and... Uh, divisions or um, narrative that's being painted in the last four years, of course, if you filled yourself up with all of this BS that's happened in the last four years, you would also have problems deciding what is right. You know, you, you won't be in a good place to put a mother and a child and a father in a row and decide what the right thing to do is. You would not. You will be 100% influenced by your racist ideologies, your national identity, you know, your ethnic whatever, like preference, your preference for finances and money and power. Those are the things you will be influenced by. 
This is why people like me are constantly kept in the chat because we have to stay in the chat to remind people of like the humanitarian casualties that always get caught up when people decide by money, wealth, power, and how manipulating the systems causes casualties on every other level underneath it. So the issue here is not, um, you know, me supporting, again, Julian Assange and freedom of speech and journalism because I've been able to visit the United States for the last 14 years since he has been in jail or in the embassy. So it's not that. So what is different this time I applied? And, you know, what is the difference? You have to use your critical theory mind, put it on, and be like, okay, what happened the last two years? Uh, that changes the game on my visa situation. One is... I spoke about vaccine, but even after that, they gave me the visa. So I'm going to rule that out. And um, Yeah, I know that. I know who's running the circles, but the point is the circles are run by creating this fake confusion that this is about some sort of like, you know, uh, division. This is a division that was created in 2016 by painting the narrative that I am anti-black and somehow siding with the wrong people is, is you being pro-black and for black empowerment, which is not the case. The reason why I became anti-black in this narrative and in the news and in the mainstream is because I stood up against the, the killing of Colonel Gaddafi who I don't benefit from. I didn't, I'm not the family that gained a billion dollars from that. So if you want to talk about, you know, black empowerment, there is two types. One is, one is you can say, um, you know, you can talk about Africa and what happened there. Or you can talk about, yes, African-American culture. And you know what? Until 2016, when it became fashionable, none of these people were saying that. You know, they were all happy. And in today, the reason why nobody can speak up against the war is because it's not true. This is also what Kanye is saying, that behind that, there's another thing. And, you know... I think that's like really important. And and they took me fighting for equality and me making records of going to build schools in Africa out of my story so easily and so quickly they were able to just turn that shit around and keep painting this narrative about my anti black. So, you know, how do you do that? How am I anti-black if I, the first thing I did with my money is go build schools in Africa, not even Sri Lanka. So it, it's, it's a narrative that was specifically painted in 216 for the rise of whatever this like situation that Kamala Harris and Biden and all of these people were fighting against. It was actually Hillary Clinton that was running at the time. And George Soros, and it's not, yes, you can say, you know, it, it's about 
certain certain narratives have to be built um, but they took me out in that process and they took me out not because I'm a racist white person you know or somebody who was anti-black they took me out because I was a different kind of person talking about oppression you know and 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 that narrative is different I want to say that right is right and wrong is wrong and you know this is about representing all the mums in the world and I think that sometimes maybe you have to do this in order for them to, to, you know, now it's not about politics, now it's not about money, it's not about wealth, it's not about power, like they have billions of dollars, everyone's happy, everyone's wealthy, everyone's got what they want, everyone's got the power, everyone can manipulate news, elections, you know, whatever the outcomes of everything is, everyone has this. But now it's about a mum and a child, you know, and, and that is where I am coming from. And when people say to me, hey, why don't you get an immigration lawyer, you know, who's going to help you, I'm finding it difficult to find one. I'm finding it difficult to find one who is not afraid of money and who can make decisions like King Solomon on what is right, um, not who has the most money. And that's the difference because we have let human beings become like this over the last five years or ten years and think it's okay for their behavior to constantly choose and make these decisions at the same time preaching to us to be better people, be conscious, be environmentally friendly, you know, we must save people, let's vaccinate them like we care. While they're doing this hypocritical bullshit chat, their decisions are 100% always made by money. And this is why, and money and power, and this is why it's important to even educate them. It's, it's even to break through the greed and the ignorance because, and if I'm using my situation to explore this and explore these ideas, then fine. So, yes, yeah, sometimes we need people in these places, whether there's lawyers and immigration people or whatever, who can make decisions based on <clears throat> just people, families, children, um, mums. So that is why I'm here today. My camera is turned green. Is Matangi moding? Anyway, thank you all for joining and I want to say that yes, from personal experience, <clears throat> I can only speak from personal experience and I'm not um,
guessing things. I've been going through this for 14 years. I think I know what I'm talking about. Um, and yes, on the timeline, the shit that changes is events in history. And, you know, the events that determined uh, what I went through in 2014 are slightly more intense today. And, but, is much more. My camera is going and I'm gonna buy a new phone right now but the phone that I have is banned um, it was banned all over the world uh, because iPhone banned it um, so I can't get it fixed anywhere I am gonna buy an Indian phone and call you back <laughs>